Today will be a very short video on the anterior abdominal wall. In front of you, I am holding a flap of tissue, fascia and muscles. If we were to divide the abdominal wall into different layers, we start out in front with the skin. Now, in this specimen, the skin has been removed except for this part where you have the umbilicus. You can see the skin has been left around the peg umbilicus region. From the skin, then we have the superficial fascia. You can see how in this specimen, there's a bit of fat and whitish fascia covering from the top side. This is the fascia camper and fascia scarpa. Camper is the fatty part and scarpa is the membranous part. Once we remove this, then comes the aponeurosis covering the muscles here. The two main muscles, or rather the pair of muscles, in the center of the abdomen is the rectus abdominis. This is the same muscle which you may have heard in layman's term is referred to as the six-pack muscles. Technically everyone has a six-pack but some people have them more toned. So this rectus abdominis muscle are two straps which go side to side in the center and between them we have the linea alba which cannot be really seen here but it's a fibrous joining between the two and at this specimen you won't be able to see it. So as I said the rectus abdominis is covered in front by aponeurosis. This aponeurosis actually comes from three different muscles and collectively they form the rectus sheath. So what you're seeing here around the rectus abdominis is the rectus sheath. You can see how it covers the back side here. It is bare. You can see how it becomes bare down below and how it's covering the front as well. The rectus sheath, as I said, come from three aponeurosis and these three aponeurosis come from three muscles. The first muscle is the external oblique muscle. You can see some fibers of the external oblique from the side. These are basically also referred to as the front pocket muscles and they come downwards and forwards. This external oblique will then make the first aponeurosis. So let's label the muscle and the aponeurosis. I will use the white to show you the first aponeurosis. All of this, and look how I'm peeling it off a bit. This is the aponeurosis, very thick and flattened. Aponeurosis is basically a flattened tendon. And I will use the yellow to denote the external oblique muscle. Let's use this one right here. This is the rectus abdominis. In fact, let me just These fibers are not that nice. I will use these fibers. These ones on the side, just to show you, they're much better. Here we have the external oblique fibers. The rectus abdominis. I'm just putting this on the top right here. You can see how they're straight and going downwards, like so. So we have two muscles here and one external oblique aponeurosis. At this point, the second aponeurosis is actually known as the internal oblique. The muscle runs parallel to the external oblique, right behind it. But this aponeurosis splits to cover the front side and the back side. If I were to turn it around, you can see how, here you can nicely see the rectus abdominis and how it's covered on the back side with the, not just the internal oblique aponeurosis, but another aponeurosis from the third muscle. So to, Illustrated actually on the top side in front if I were to hold it like so In the front we have external oblique aponeurosis then internal oblique aponeurosis front part Internal oblique aponeurosis back part and finally the transverse abdominis aponeurosis So this is how they're covering it and forming the rectus sheet But as we descend downward there comes a point Namely this point it's been marked with a red black marker known as the arcuate line this line is where every aponeurosis from the back side comes forward. That's why this area is completely bare. You don't see the aponeurosis here. The rectus sheet has been removed from this point. It has come to the front side. So I will use a green uh, mark, uh, pen, yeah. pen 
to mark the heart rate line. And here once again, you can see the rectus abdominis. Use this to mark the rectus abdominis. And here we can see actually the linea alba in the center. So that's very nice. Put a white frame there, notes the linea alba in the center, right over here. Now, so the rectus sheath formed by the three epineurosis and the three muscles, and here you can also see the transverse abdominis muscle, right over here. See how the fibers are running transversely. Remember, external oblique muscles were front and descending. Internal oblique were basically running in the outward directions. They're also called back pocket. But the transverse abdominis muscles, they are actually running transversely. So here's that muscle. Here's the rectus abdominis, the linea alba, and the arcuate line. And here we have the rectus sheath backside. And remember, this was formed by apneurosis of the transverse abdominis and internal oblique as well. With that said, there's only one more thing to show that is very prominent here, and are these vessels. These are the inferior epigastric vessels. The artery is the one which I'm holding right now. Down below, actually, there are three major lines formed here due to the peritoneal folds. In the center, we have the median umbilical ligament. A small part is attached is right over here. The remaining is mostly not seen. The median umbilical ligament is actually a remnant of the Eurectus. To the side, then we'll have the medial umbilical ligament. We know the center is medial, this is medial. That is a remnant of the umbilical artery, forms a cord like structure here. Those two are not nicely seen on this. The edges, they have a bit of impression, but it's not really nice to see here. On the other hand, the lateral most part, which is formed by the inferior epigastric vessels, that you can see here. This is also a landmark used when trying to determine an indirect and direct inguinal hernia. So I will put a red pin through this, this is a small one, like so. Here we go. And with that, you can see the fear epigastric vessels. So there's not much else to see on the anterior abdominal wall. You know that there's rectus abdominis and the sheet is around that covers it, as well as the side muscles. But the majority of the structures and content of the abdominal cavity lies within the cavity itself. So thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, I love this.